In this video, not only are we gonna break down the preview for chapter 91, what I think it implies, but we're also gonna talk about the Hades bonus chapter that we got at the end of chapter 90 that I haven't covered yet. So starting things off with the preview, Okita Suji awakens after receiving the supreme technique of Susanoo's Ame no Magaishi. Can the Sword of Sincerity defeat the Sword of the Gods? So Sword of Sincerity is what sticks out to me. Obviously, you could tell that because of the translation, it's a little choppy. But if the Sword of Sincerity is what they're highlighting here, I think that that tells us that I've kind of been predicting this chapter after chapter now because just in line with the patterns of the series. But this one tells me more so than ever before that we are going to get emphasis on the Valun if the sword is the Valun. There's some people that are going around thinking that the Valun is going to do something similar to what Raiden's did, where Raiden basically had a Valun to control his muscles. Maybe Okita's Valun has something to do with his heart to pump blood faster or protect his heart from exploding so he can really push the Onigo technique to new limits, which we saw him do at the end of last chapter. So maybe that's the case, or maybe it's just him being healthy for once, because don't forget, when he had done the Onigo technique in his spinoff, he was dealing with tuberculosis and he was not at his full potential. The problem with that theory though, is that it's explicitly stated in the first fight, Thor versus Lu Bu, that mortal weapons simply cannot harm gods and they can not compete with divine weaponry. That's the whole point. They have to have something to even the odds. So especially in this case where it's a battle of swordsmanship, I think it'd be very weird if his Valund is not one of the katanas or both i just don't think it makes much sense i think that the onigo technique and his heart control is just his innate technique to be honest with you but who knows maybe you guys are right so i do think that we are going to get emphasis on okita's sword next chapter we haven't got the name of the sword we haven't seen why it's special to him why he uses it also it was implied he had two katanas we haven't seen the second katana be wielded yet so i think that that's the questions that we get answered in this obviously the pendulum swung back to susano this chapter so next chapter seems that it will go back to okita okita in the early parts of the next chapter should get the upper hand we'll see how we end things off this seems to be the start of the real battle we're in the moment like we're here this is where shit gets serious. I can't wait, honestly. But you guys have to understand that at some point we will get at least an abridged version of Okita's backstory. I know I covered some of the backstory that was in his spinoff, but they have to put a backstory in this series for people that haven't read that or don't know about it. It just has to happen. So that might stop some of the momentum. Maybe that gets brought in in 91 or we get a setup for it for 92, depending on how long this fight is going to go. With that said, I hope we do go back to very quick movements because this fight was at the beginning i highlighted in some of my breakdowns you guys can go back and check those out if you haven't like it was awesome to see okita wasn't even really speaking it was just immediate attack 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 the two snows having to react to block dodge and counter and the fight was really intense and great the last two chapters have kind of slowed the pace because we had obviously susano's big backstory and then we had one big slash that was the emphasis of the entire chapter for 90. So hopefully we get back to fast paced action because I think this fight deserves it and it's been great so far. I also would kind of like us to move to a different portion of the map. I kind of thought we would be moving around the map. I'd love for these two to have their final face off on a bridge would be really cool. It would remind me of Vagabond. So I hope that they move around. They've kind of stayed within the same alleyway the entire time, which I think is kind of a uh, a waste especially because you have this great custom stage in a city so i hope that they start moving around also another thing i found interesting that i didn't really highlight in my breakdown is that susano's siblings and his father izanagi don't actually arrive to the arena they're watching from home i thought that was an interesting little detail because usually we see there's support for that god in the arena so susano really doesn't have anybody there physically supporting him so that it kind of makes me wonder how the concluding moments of this fight are gonna go if he does die I wonder if there'll be any emphasis on them regretting not seeing him in person or regretting banishing him from their holy land and if he was to somehow come out of this which i think is very unlikely who would he go speak to after so i think that that's kind of sad but also uh super interesting i also wonder if Izanagi is this supreme god of this pantheon, was it just a situation where he was 
he viewed the tournament as beneath him. Why was he not asked to be in this tournament? Do they, do the gods like Zeus maybe not know he's around? Because there's theories that he's a primordial that are supposed to be extinct. So maybe he is a primordial. Who knows? I'd like to get all these questions answered. I'm not sure if we will, but just a little nugget that I thought was interesting. With that said, now let's move on to the Hades bonus chapter in which we see Zeus and Hades playing in a game of chess. And what we see throughout this bonus chapter is that they actually are on like one of those islands that is similar to like what Buddha chills on. And Hades continues to beat Zeus's ass in chess. And it doesn't even really seem like he's putting much effort into it. It just seems like there's a wide skill gap between the two of them. Hades is reading while playing, very dismissive, almost condescending. And Zeus keeps getting more and more angry. But it just plays in the fact that how smart Hades was he was the wise brother amongst them and I like this because it shows that they had a close relationship which when you cut back to you know obviously you know Zeus reacting to his brother's death and why he took that so hard it's good that we see things like this I still want more backstory for the Greeks I still want more deep dives because I feel like there's so much we'd love to know about what they've done beforehand I'd even like to see the Titanomachy tournament and how that was structured with that said, we continue going and Zeus refuses to get up. He hates losing, he's super competitive, and he keeps playing over and over and over again because he believes that one time he will be able to win and it just does not happen. There's one game where he thinks that he has Hades dead to rights and Hades <laughs> comes out of nowhere and ends up winning the match and it breaks Zeus's spirit. Some really cool drawings. And in the end, Zeus actually slams his head on the table so hard, he starts bleeding. And then he gets so mad that he goes into his like crazed state and like smashes the chess table. And Hades reaction there is nice to me because he's used to seeing Zeus like this. And I'd actually love to see, I don't know if we're ever gonna get this, probably not, but I'd love to see Zeus, Hades sparring each other in the past. Even if that led to it, I don't think there will be much expansion on this, but if Zeus was so mad about he couldn't beat him in chess, he wanted to actually fight Hades, that'd be awesome. I would love that. I think a lot of people would love that. We want to see common opponents, you know, which we're going to get that spinoff with God versus God fights, but we want to see these gods have like scaling to each other, fights against each other. They don't have to be to the death, but we want to see that type of shit. It would make things a lot easier to understand. And I'd even like to see Poseidon get involved. Nice bonus chapter. Always love to see Hades. Wish he was still in the series. Wish he never lost, even though I'm a major Chin Chi Wang fan. But this is what we have to settle for. With that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe, drop a like on the video, and let me know what your predictions are for chapter 91. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Nice. Nice.